After half a day out at sea, it's time to sort the haul. Small boats such as these in Tamarang City, central Java, contribute 70% of the nation's catch. A few years ago, these waters were in danger of being overfished. Foreign vessels illegally worked off the Indonesian coast. Stocks only recovered after the government started sinking unlicensed boats. Significant improvement com compared with other countries in the world. One of the main reasons because of the very tough policy that we conduct on the fishing vessels. And it, this impact, impacted not, uh, not only to the, uh, the fishermen in Indonesia, but also to other industry like boat. But now the industry faces a new threat. Indonesia's fisheries exports may have improved, but this country is also the world's second largest plastic waste contributor. Some of that waste inevitably ends up in its waters and makes its way into the food chain. As plastic degrades, it breaks into small chunks, some of which get eaten by fish and other marine life. Pieces smaller than 5 mm are called microplastics. Food technologist Inika Hantoro is studying microplastics in seafood in Indonesia and its effects on humans. So far, we found from about uh, almost 200 samples we, we've done you know, with the digestion and microscopic observation. We found that almost all, uh, all samples contain particles that we suspected as microplastics. Not far from the laboratory are fish farms. Muyi has been working in the aquaculture industry for 15 years. More and more of his work involves clearing rubbish. Plastic pollution is a big problem. Every year the trash accumulates in the river, making it more and more shallow. It's really bad for the fish farms too. Fish caught in plastic waste can suffocate. Poor water quality also affects their growth. The government wants to cut plastic debris by 70% by 2025. But until that happens, plastic will continue to be on the menu for fish and us. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera, Samarang, Indonesia.